I think people are driven to see the meaning of life through the afterlife because the greatest fear that we are all programmed to carry, I think, as human creatures, as human beings, is this fear of death. It's mystical and it's mysterious. And we don't understand it and we never will. A lot of people are f looking for some type of spiritual experience. And many of our religions today don't give a spiritual experience instead of going through an intermediary. Some people believe they can go to a haunted house and talk to a spirit. I believe that most of the things that people call ghosts are creations of our own mind. Our minds are pretty amazing things. But so I believe that if it's something you're afraid of, what the mind can create, the mind can also destroy. It is a very evil, evil spirit. I wouldn't even consider it human. You raise a very interesting question. Actually, I'll get this on camera. If you enter the cellar, you do so at your own risk. Grim Ghost Tours did not take any responsibility for loss of life or limb. You die down there, that's your own darn fault. Yes, yes. Got it, got it, yes. yes. If you get hurt, how are you going to get down? Careful. Yeah, are you gone? Yeah. Okay. The Ted was I'll actually take one for the team executed and not go. in do you want to go? by electric chair. Yes, but no. Yeah. Now, so guards have said that they can still see Ted sitting in the electric chair when they Do you need to go? I want a better picture of this. Can you tag me? Dude, do you want me to take it for you? I'm like right here. Oh, look at what's on the walls. Are we done? Nope. I don't. Is there anybody so, down there? Other people want to go down there. I, here, I, I feel like yeah, I don't want to see him. Well, yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing. Right here is the tree that you see the woman. Oh. Both of these women are kind women. They're kind-hearted. They're not going to hurt you. They're not going to harm you or judge you. They simply are your beacon to allow you to speak to us. Please. Let us know that you are here. You don't have to be afraid. Make sure there's nothing back there. You know, sometimes the spirits are just a little more talkative in the evenings. And sometimes they're not. It looks like she doesn't want to speak to us tonight. Are you doing okay? Because yeah, I know, shine, I don't shine know the light towards this. Do you need me to get the the one from Abby? You don't have anybody. Um, I think I'm just going to... Get the camera. It's going off. It's going off like crazy. It's been, it's been... She's here. Like, she's here. Alright, walk forward a second. Let's see if she comes with you. She's going to follow you for a second. Right. Let's let's continue to walk and see if she's following us back to the bus. Oh my god. Are you in the trees? Oh fuck. Pointing towards the trees. I've had many, many experiences with spirit boards. Um, you could do a two-hour session on that. Uh, but enough to know that, yes, this, the spirits do want to communicate with us if we give them the opportunity.
And if we do it in a right in the right way, we can communicate with it, with them without getting into any trouble. I think people are looking for spiritual roots, and our ancestors are those spiritual roots. And a tree without roots can't grow. It can't produce fruit. But then again, roots without a branch or fruit are useless. So it's almost like perhaps maybe our ancestral roots are looking for branches or trees that they can hook onto so that there is a con continuity of life, of spirit. Uh, people can feel connected to the earth or they can feel connected to a family. We have physical genetics. <laughs> We have traits that are passed down physically. Why can't there be sp spiritual traits that are passed down? Why, why does that connection die when a person dies? When obviously the genetic connection doesn't die, it keeps on growing. So why not talk to great grandma? Max Weber described what he called the magic garden. And that was a time when the world was seen as animated by spirits and everyone felt connected and everything had a spirit, rocks, trees, animals, uh, everything was sacred in, in a fundamental and powerful way. Uh, and death was seen as this animating spirit that came into people. And when people died, they tended to think that the spirit had gone. There's a, a lot of theorists that have written about religion. Uh, and there's a common theme that's developed. Uh, Peter Berger calls it the sacred canopy. This sacred canopy gives people direction and hope. Uh, it answers these troubling questions about life, including death. It says, I see things die. It frightens me. What is that all about? Religion gives you a script for that. But there's a rising number of young people who are questioning that along with organized religion and actually moving back to the, the old, more animistic magic garden and saying, hey, everything is sacred and I'm part of this and this is where my spirituality lies. I think religion is the cornerstone for most people uh, of why we feel what we feel about the afterlife. It is the biggest component of religion in many respects is to give hope that this life isn't all there is, that what comes next is purposeful, that what happens and what we make of our lives here has a direct correlation to what happens over there. So there's all these different things. I know people talk about reincarnation, but some sects talk about it, some sects don't. My particular sect doesn't. We talk about a pure land after death that is unconditional for all people to go to. We say that they are embraced in compassion. So I believe that once I die, I don't have to worry about anything. So what I should do is focus on what I'm doing now, being fine, mindful of all I have to be grateful to be alive at this moment and work on that rather than worrying about what's gonna happen whenever I die. If I'm sitting here alone by myself, wondering what's it all about, I'm not gonna be prone to wanna go out and get a job and get married and raise kids and have a family, you know? And what religion does, it, it uh, gives purpose to life and also denies or obscures all the uncertainties, uh, all the potential uh, difficulties that you might face and lets you take care of business. The power of religion is in this invisible source of power. And part of that has to do with explaining all the terror in life and denying death. And what Becker says in his book, The Denial of Death, is if you look really objectively at life, there's a lot of bad stuff going on out there people dying and suffering, unneeded suffering. This, this question that, that they address in terms of theodicy, why is there suffering in the world and why do good people suffer? Religions answer that, or they try to. 
A social worker friend of mine says, it's hard to get out of these bodies. It's hard to leave this world sometimes. And it is. And not so much physically, always, but oftentimes emotionally and relationally. In my experience, people generally will express to me about their approaching death a series of things. It's never just one thing. It is the stages of death that we go through, which are denial and anger and bargaining, not in that order necessarily, and they'll vacillate back and forth, um, and ultimately to a place of acceptance. At the time when somebody is actually dying physically uh, in an active state of death, we call it. I've had people relate to me some amazing spiritual experiences. They sometimes will look up, and oddly, it's almost always upper left in the room. And I can tell they're looking at something because there's an awareness in their eyes. There's a sense of wonder. And so I'll ask them, are you seeing something? Are you hearing something? What's happening to you right now? And so with that permission, people oftentimes will say, I've had people say, um, they've come to get me. And I'll ask who, and they'll say, oh, it's their angels. That was one case. Most people will almost always do this picking thing. And so I've had doctors tell me it's strictly a neurological response to the active dying phase. I've had other people tell me that it's right there. I'll say, what are you reaching for? And they'll say, it's right there. And I'll say, what? And they'll say, it. Can't you see it? It's right here. It's amazing. So that's what I think the picking is. I think they, and I think we are given this tremendous gift at the time of death. And I think it's intentional. And I think it's God granted to bring us tremendous comfort, whether that is a deity whether that is a loved one, whether that is a group of angelic beings, whatever it is, I think God sends specifically for us in that time to invite us and to encourage us and to help us move out of this into that. About three or four years ago, I died in this hospital in Reno. When I came to, I was in this ICU. I had all these things hooked up to me. And this nurse, I think she just wanted to keep me conscious to talk to me. So she said, what do you do? And I said, I'm a Buddhist priest. And she goes, wow, I've always been interested in Buddhism. What can you tell me about it? And in my mind, I'm thinking, wow, I'm dying here, and you want me to lecture on the Buddha's teachings at this moment. I didn't say anything. I just said, OK. I said, the most important teaching is impermanence. And this impermanence, the idea of death, teaches me that this moment I'm in right now, this very uncomfortable moment in the ICU, will pass. So I don't have to worry about too much. But at the same time, it teaches me about the wonderful times that I'm having when I'm not in the ICU, when I'm out with my family, when I'm with my kids, that those moments will pass also. So I have to appreciate those because all these moments are impermanent. So it's nothing I have to worry about, but it's something that I should embrace and appreciate because it's not going to last. When you wrote to me and says it was chasing death, I thought, what an interesting title. I says, I don't know if people chase death. Most people try to run away from it. You know, if you face it and realize that it's going to happen to you, it's not scary. If you are able to embrace it, you're able to live a much fuller life. I feel like I'm Maybe not a religious person, but a spiritual, 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 spiritual person. It's been going off kind of sporadically all night. Do you have any questions? <laughs> I don't know. 
So don't worry. If Ted Bundy does follow us, he can only get to this point.